Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba, thank you for joining me. Let's play some Factorio. So this is my probably 10th time starting a new campaign and I've learned so much that I feel like it's time to just start over from scratch and walk you through the process of building up to robotics and hopefully continuing to go past that um, at that point. So let's start a new game. Normal settings everywhere around, not peaceful mode, and let's go. Okay, so, um, what I've learned, oh my goodness, look at all that beautiful oil, is that uh, starting location, I used to think was kind of important, but it, it really doesn't matter anymore. You know, I used to think, oh, you should try to position yourself next to the resources, but later on in this game, it's very easy to move lots of raw resources to wherever you need them with trains and other other useful things, like even just driving around. Um, I found that it's very effective to drive the car and, and to go pick up oil um, and then bring it back to the base. As long as the oil is being loaded up into barrels, crude oil barrels, while you're not paying attention, then it's, it's very effective. Now, the last playthrough that I was doing, I did on on Twitch and I played for gosh probably eight hours before I actually started playing it on Twitch and now I'm up to about 13 hours into the game on one playthrough <laughs> so if you haven't decided in your mind yet if this game is worth the money even though it is technically still an alpha just take into consideration that I've wasted 13 hours on one playthrough and now here I am restarting again so it's just ridiculous how much you can get out of this in fact, I'm doing this, uh, look this up, there's, this, there's a term called uh, the Tetris Effect, which is where if you spend too much time working on a particular problem-solving thing or like a pattern recognition type thing, then it can cause you to dream about the game or have difficulty sleeping because you're so focused on it, and that is definitely happening to me. I can't uh, I can't tell you how late I stayed up last night trying to think about factory layouts. I didn't even really want to do it, but I couldn't stop. So I am immensely enjoying this game. So basic factory setup is very simple. Um, I like to use a little bit of wood to get the burners going. I generally only make about three or four of the uh, actual uh, burner mining drills because you very quickly get past them. I like to move to electricity fairly fast. Not so fast that it uh, you don't get a chance to like, get some good resources early on, but I think that it's important to start off in a pretty modular setup where you're not too worried about where things are and just recognize that you're going to have a lot of time. And also pollution is something that I used to be like, ooh, ooh you got to be really careful. Don't do too much pollution because the bad guys are going to come. Ooh, 260. Some really nice oil around here. Um, but the thing is that you can just go kill them. <laughs> just go kill their bases, and then they stop spawning. <laughs> and then you can make as much pollution as you want. <laughs> so <laughs> We're going to make a pretty big factory um, and try to make it so that it doesn't take 12 hours to actually get to the point that I was at before. I tried playing um, another solo campaign. I, I named it Solo 2 like 2.0 type thing and uh, you know it was not that difficult really to to get to I mean it still takes a long time for the research unless you really get a lot automated which is part of the goal but um, it didn't take 12 hours I got like probably two and a half three hours in and I was most of the way there but there are some really cool things. And, and part of the reason why I'm restarting this and just playing it from scratch and showing all of what, what happens, how we get there, is because um, some people were kind of kind of disinterested in the jumping around Factorio because you, you kind of don't know how we got to where we were, like what's the purpose of the layout. And even though this will take a lot more time overall, I do think that it, it'll make for a pretty enjoyable playthrough. I'm not really chopping these trees down for any particular reason other than that it's something to do while I wait for that iron to smelt. And because 
I like to have lots of spare wood in the beginning so that we can use it for fuel and uh, also you use it for electrical poles so we do need to find some copper there we go right there let's get another one of uh, whoop, didn't actually need that yet but we're gonna need it soon I've also learned all the shortcut keys to this game I really enjoy how well programmed the shortcut keys are in this um, yeah, we'll just put load that thing all the way up. Being able to, for instance, um, clear your your tool belt by cl control left clicking is really useful because a lot of times you get a bunch of junk in there. You can also control click here and it will just load as much crap up down there as it can into useful things. Notice how it only put one stack of raw wood. It's very useful, and we can also set these to be specific items in the near future. Okay, so we need a little bit of copper so we can make our offshore pump and get our power going. From there, it's going to be um, about maybe we want to try to find some coal that we can get ready to ferry over to our iron assembly. In the very beginning of the game, it's all about iron. You need tons and tons and tons of iron. But then, as you get a little bit further in, copper starts to be very important for all the electronics. You start using boatloads of copper for copper coil and for just making electronic circuits. Electronic circuits get used in everything. So I used to highly value iron over copper and I'd have like 10 to 1 iron to copper production but now as you get a little bit further in the game it, it doesn't quite work that way. So we will send that back up. We don't need that. We don't really need the wood down there either. And we're ready to make an offshore pump. We will for now just plop it down. We'll do some some design type stuff soon. But for now, I just want to get it started. So we'll put our burner there. We'll burn wood, because why not? We'll get some electrical poles. I need more wood. Now trees do actually reduce pollution. Something to know. They absorb it. Not at a very significant rate, but some. So I guess maybe, maybe there's an argument for not always chopping on down all the trees, but I doubt it. Okay, get some of those things started. We've got our electrical thing here. We've got power. Good, good. Okay, first thing we're going to do is head over to uh, iron production land because that is where I want to really speed up the production. Also, we're going to use a lot of radar early on. Okay, need a couple transport belts and a couple inserters, which will require a little bit more copper. Still have no coal production. Alright, so let's just disassemble this. It was very temporary in the first place. And we'll go with a single guy for now. Positioned, trying to cover as much of this as possible, just so that we can not have to position it quite as often. We'll do a very short run and we'll replace those stone furnaces um, actually below so we can use the power. I'm very I try to be very minimal, minimalist minimalistic now in my my design because I tend to make these huge huge long things that um, uh, shoot That'll work. Okay, we will load up the raw wood again. So one of these things can, can pretty much, assuming it has full power, can power two stone furnaces. Okay, I think it's time we get the coal over. We'll need a, lot of, a couple more transport belts. And I like to do these big long 10 unit long steam engine runs now off a single pipe so as far as where we would put that probably wouldn't be terrible over this way up here it wouldn't intersect with too much stuff we could have at least two of them that would fit between that iron stone and stone lots of iron nearby I like that quite a bit so let's get some more of these things make some more transport belts 
I also like to keep the boilers separate from the steam engines so that they so it's not too big if that makes sense so why don't we get another electric steam engine down and plop it say well it's not quite gonna fit to cover that whole strip but that'll work And then, where do we want the boiler assembly to be? I think the boiler assembly will probably want to be parallel to the steam engines, which are going to go here-ish. So let's do steam boily stuff here-ish. Okay. Let's get our boilers going. We're going to want to start off about... I, I like to just... I know what the, some of the numbers are in the game now. Um, notably, like... You need 13 boilers to power 10 steam engines at 99% effectiveness. So, if you want them to be fully effective, you need to have... Um, If you want them to be totally fully effective, you need to have 14. And I don't mind just going straight up to that because you know you're going to need it and it makes sense to design the infrastructure in a way that you're not going to have to mess with it too much. So we're using a lot of our early iron getting this initial track going, which I'm fine with. We also have 14 boilers plus a 15th that's already constructed. Okay. So, I am picturing water will come in. I'd really prefer if this thing went that way, but we can move that later. We'll put water along this thing. Which means that this only needs to go to here. And I put those in the wrong spot. I need to be one off the track. So there's our 14 boilers. We'll need 14 inserters. And then we can we can get some pretty serious coal product or uh, iron production going after getting this thing out of the way. And we really don't need to have inserters for every single thing yet because they're not all going to be used, but it looks so nice and organized, you know? Makes me want to have it just complete. Three more, ideal. Okay. Now you need a little bit more fuel. We'll give you some coal for now. These guys are doing okay for the moment. Notice how we burned through pretty much all the wood. That did not take long. All that tree chopping that I did. Goodness, it's gone. These ones are both doing fine though. We'll just make a second offshore pump because I don't want to. Okay, and we can power two sides of this thing. Two two sides will be able to be powered, and then I'll have to do a splitter, and we can have four if we get to that point. Okay, uh, right. We need to get our water up there. And that should work. Need more iron so we can make some underground pipe. We'll start making regular pipe, which will most of, most of it will get end up used by the underground pipe. I'm a big fan of underground pipe because it just makes everything a little bit easier to walk around and very organized and clean. So that's fine. All right, so pipe to ground. We're going to want a regular section of pipe here with pipe to ground here. And as far down as we can bring it, really. And pipe to ground is pretty expensive. It's 10 pipes. So it takes 15 iron to make one, where this takes one. So if you're going to do a very short run, it is pretty wasteful to use pipe to ground. To just do that. So we got our water. We got our fuel. We've got... I'll uh, we'll just throw a little tiny bit in there. 
And we need a boiler. Or, sorry, a steam engine. Why don't we tie in the electricity from here for now? And we'll just move that one. Temporarily going to have no power at all. Now what I like about this design, if I haven't already said it, is that... Uh, oh, and actually I do want to do another pipe to ground. I'm going to go from here, and then I like to put it at least like the full distance away. So a nice big path that I can walk through. You don't have to worry. It's not like the water is going to get cooled down between here and here. It just It doesn't work that way. All you have to do is heat it up to full and then the water will be totally fine. So now we have an assembly that is prepared for growth, which is really useful. Knowing kind of like how much power you're going to need or like how much space you're going to need to do one of these things in advance is really useful. This thing can be expanded now 10 steam engines deep and this assembly will power all of them at 100% effectiveness. So next, what I like to do, since we don't really have to worry about too many like uh, attacks in the beginning, is we make a bunch more steam engines, and then we really get our radar powered up heavy. We just knock out a ton of these things. A little bit of stone's nice, because you're going to need lots of boilers. In the beginning, I just make a lot of stone furnaces with that stuff. Okay, I'm going to throw these down. They're not going to get used for a long time. But notice how the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius all the way through. So now we have tons of power, and we are ready to throw down some radars. We just need lots of iron start off with one. But now we need to really crank up iron production. So, okay, well I'm going to take a break here. I do look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please do um, like the video if you like the video, and do comment if you want to see more Factorio. I think that this campaign is going to be a bit more organized, and I'm going to know what I'm doing a little bit better, and uh, I think it'll be fun for everyone involved. So, thanks for watching everyone. See you in the next video.